We have hit March, obviously, and while it's not necessarily date specific, a number of COVID updates seem to be happening all about the same time right now. So let's bring in our infectious diseases expert, Upstate Global Health Director, Dr. Stephen Thomas. Always good to see you, sir. Thanks for joining us. It's great to be with you. Thank you. So a few weeks ago, we were discussing the CDC plan to change it. Seemed like it would be actually a few more months. But Friday, the agency right. went ahead and, and they did away with that five-day quarantine for people who contract COVID. So what are the rules now? Are there rules? <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the leaks turned out to be true in this one. Uh, yeah, and, you know, they're not rules, right? They're, they are guidelines. And there's lots of different reasons behind why, some practical, some based on the science as to why they have changed them. Uh, so the first thing I'll say is this is for the general public. This is not for healthcare institutions. And so um, the, 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 those rules are a separate bundle and those kind of still apply. Yeah, but for the general public, what they're basically saying is that uh, if you uh, if you get COVID um, and you have a fever uh, and you have other symptoms, once that fever is gone and it's been gone for 24 hours and it's been gone without the use of medications uh, and your symptoms are uh, have improved or are trending towards improvement, um, then at that point you can come back out and come back into society and do the go to go to work and go to school and do the things that. Uh, that you were doing before. Without There's, a, ma without you know, a mask? Well, no. So that's a good okay. point. There are caveats to that. They're saying you should continue to wear a mask for at least the remainder of five days and probably longer. You should try to avoid going to uh, high density yeah. populated areas if possible. Uh, you should also try to be in well ventilated areas. Um, so yeah, there, there's some there's a back end to this to this recommendation, which makes it a little bit more complex than uh, it seems on the surface. What do we do uh, to uh, stay vigilant uh, against this if people are probably going to follow some of these guidelines, maybe not follow them really at all? It's kind of a free fall free for all right now. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, when they've when they've surveyed people, uh, about a third of people have not been isolating no. even when they've known they are in infected, right? So uh, so those people are probably not gonna change their um, behavior. And so the other two thirds of, of people, um, again, it's gonna be kind of a, uh, a personal check on, on how you want to, uh, you know, live in your community and whether or not you're gonna you're gonna kind of go out there if you're still having symptoms and you have a known diagnosis. Uh, are you going to test yourself? Are you going to you know uh, um, rely on that test result to guide uh, to guide your behavior? Um, but it's not it's not. I'll be honest. It's not a completely unreasonable. Uh, guidance right now and there's a whole I mean there's 25 pages of data that they have put out uh, publicly available on the CDC website to guide this decision and basically what it's saying is you know there's a lot of people who don't have any symptoms at all and they're walking around out there and they're transmitting yeah. the people who do have symptoms the majority of them are transmitting within the first three days um, and so even though uh, and, and when people have symptoms that seems to correspond with when they are they are at their most transmissible and infectious okay. state so let's end on this one you talked about uh, booster shots CDC also last week Wednesday just a couple of days before dropping the uh, quarantine uh, guidance they recommend now people 65 and older get a second COVID vaccine shot, meaning that fall 2023 updated shot. Uh, why and uh, how do we get people to do it when the vaccination rate is pretty low for that first one? Right. So the science behind this is that, um, you know, we still had at one point uh, relatively recently, you know, 20,000 new people getting admitted to the hospital around the country every week and hundreds of people dying every week of COVID, not with COVID. But the majority of those people are unvaccinated people or they are people over 65 years of age with medical problems and certainly people over 75 years of age. So I think this is why they're targeting that specific um, uh, demographic. Uh, and the other thing we're seeing is that those vaccines, the study of the vaccines that have uh, have shown that they significantly reduce the risk of hospitalization and death in those specific populations. So that's why I think they gave a very um, a very tight recommendation on that. And then the other thing that has come out today is that we can expect a new flavor of COVID vaccine um, this fall. And they'll probably be making the uh, decision on what the ingredients of that will be in the May timeframe. We'll have you back uh, when that comes out. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. Appreciate you. Thank you.